Hello again, my name is Jason, and today I'm going to be talking about Vampire Hunter D. Um, <clears throat> in case any of you have uh, heard of the anime, or the manga, that uh, has the same title, uh, they're adapted from a book uh, written by Hideyuki Kikuchi. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. Um, anyway, uh, the story of Vampire Hunter D it goes back quite a way. Uh, 83, if I remember right, is when they were first published in Japanese. Uh, they didn't come to the States until much, much later. Uh, the novels, anyway. Uh, the anime came... I remember watching the anime... Oh, 99, 2000? Somewhere around there. Um, and uh, then... There was another Vampire Hunter D movie called Bloodlust. Um, but anyway, um, I eventually uh, saw uh, the bookstore, I think it was, or I heard online that the, that the books were going to be translated into English. So I started collecting them. I have 20 or so. I think there's 26, according to uh, Wikipedia, of the Vampire Hunter D novels. Um, in the first novel, if you have seen the Vampire Hunter D movie, the first one, it follows very closely to the story in the book. If you haven't ever re read the book or seen the movie or anything, it's pretty good. Um, so, it, they're, they're set on Earth, but they're set thousands and thousands, I shouldn't say just say thousands, tens of thousands of years in the future. Um, there was a nuclear war, uh, the earth got ruined, but the vampires who had been hiding out and biding their time, um, they uh, stockpiled weapons and science and, um, and I, by, by science, I mean scientific resources. Um, and then when the dust kind of settled, they came out and because they were the ones with the technology and the magic and everything, and humans were kind of, you know, primitive, knocking themselves back into the Dark Ages at that point, the vampires just came out and took over. And they started rebuilding everything. Um, and the, the society, uh, it kind of mirrored the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, because of the decadence of the society, uh, the society eventually collapsed in on itself. Um, and at this point, the humans are now taking control back. Uh, vampires are going e are either dead or going into hiding. Um, and so there's there's this frontier feel. So you kind of get a, a, an old West style feel with a lot of these novels. Um, there's uh, talk of a capital and um, and uh, technological advancements and things, but they happen a, a long way away. They don't happen there in the in the novels. They're, they refer to this gleaming, uh, technologically advanced capital, but it's it's you know it's a, a long way away, and the the rest of the the frontier just has to deal with what's going on. Um, so you all you also have a hierarchy. So there's there's a lot of monsters now. Some of them are um, magical monsters that uh, existed from myth, uh, and then there's a lot of monsters that the uh, the vampires introduced into the ecology uh, via magic and and science and manipulation and stuff. Um, and because of these monsters, you now have monster hunters, and they even have their own hierarchy. So. Um, the, the, ha the harder it is to fight and kill that particular monster, the more prestige is involved with that particular job, with Vampire Hunter being the pinnacle, the top uh, of that particular hierarchy. So we're introduced to, to this, this world and this um, uh, mythos, and uh, what happens is, out on a town on the frontier, there's a woman. Her name is Doris Lang, and she's attractive. She's she's young. She's also 
descended from werewolf hunters and her her father was a werewolf hunter and um she catches the eye of the count magnus lee uh, magnus lee then bites her and uh, because of her now being under the curse of the vampires uh she has two options at this point either join with them and become fully a vampire or basically being staked by the villagers that she lives with um and then d rides into town and she's actually been watching town and challenging bounty hunters and things um to to see if she could find someone who could defeat magnus lee for her and when d walks into uh rides on his cyborg horse you can kind of see a, a picture of it here on the cover uh the illustrator uh there's a lot of illustrations in the book um and then on the cover here as well uh they're by uh, yoshitaka amano and i'm saying these in the the way that are, obviously I'm, I'm white i've never been to japan uh, my brother's been there but not me um and in japanese culture i know that they would switch those around amano is his uh family name and so that would be Amano Yoshitaka and the the writer would be Kikuchi Hideyuki but I mean look at me I'm white anyway um D has several so D is his name he just goes by D uh, he it is kind of implied that he does have a proper name uh but for whatever reason he doesn't go by it and he just goes by D um D is a vampire hunter, so at the top of that particular hierarchy, and he is challenged by Doris and easily overcomes her. And she then reveals to him uh, he was not planning on stopping, not planning on, on participating in this particular venture, but she reveals that, sh that uh, she is going to be turning into a vampire and um, she needs his help. And so he decides to help her. Um, you meet a lot of people in this, uh, her, she has a brother named Dan, um, she, uh, in town, like I said, she's an attractive young lady. So she, um, is courted, uh, rather poorly by, uh, Greco Roman, the son of the mayor of the town. Um, there's Ray Ginsey and Larmica, uh, Dr doctor i forget the doctor's name anyway the the doctor in the town is a friend of her and her fa and her family has been for years um but all these people are there in the town getting in the way of what's going on and throwing in their two bits and stuff um doris is very much uh protective of her brother dan and that does come into play later um the count on his on his part uh, he is interested in, in her becoming his bride. Uh, his daughter, uh, Larmica, is definitely dead set against it. She is of the opinion that the vampire race must remain pure, and so she wants to do everything she can to, to stop her father from marrying this commoner. Um, they have a, a servant named Ray Ginsey, a um, hired muscle, basically. He has, he's a mutant, and he, he can use his body uh, to create uh, warp holes to other places. Um, it's a rather interesting uh, thing when he fights uh, D and uh, the, the results of the fight. Uh, anyway, um, so D has his work cut out for him. And not only does he have to fight against this, this very powerful, very old vampire, um, but he's also got to deal with the town who, when they find out that Doris has been bitten by the vampire, they have their own safety precautions in place because of what happens when people get bit by vampires. Um, and then there's the, the machinations of Larmica and uh, Ray Ginsey behind the scenes on their side, uh, with Larmica and Ray Ginsey trying to influence uh, Count. Um, uh, yes, Count, Magnus Lee. Uh, trying to convince him not to marry this woman, not to turn her into a vampire, that kind of thing. 
Um, <clears throat> now, if you're thinking of like traditional vampires, there's a lot of stuff in there that is very traditionally uh, based, um, very much based on the Bram Stoker uh, Dracula that was that has been in our part of our, our culture for, for many, many years. Um, but there's a lot of it that's different. So for instance, um, while D is a, um, a vampire hunter, he's actually half vampire. And that's what makes him such a, a formidable figure in, in these novels. Um, so the vampires and humans can, um, intermarry is not the, the thing that I, they can have offspring. Um, and so, uh, Larmica not wanting the bloodline polluted kind of thing, um, is something that, you know, when you think of it from the vampire's perspective of the traditional vampire, um, a lot of times the traditional vampire is sterile and cannot reproduce and that's the word i was looking for reproduce wherein uh, the vampire hunter d novels there is that ability to reproduce between vampires and humans um <clears throat> so i i got into the books because of the anime i'm i'm definitely into anime i uh, was just watching some anime with my daughter earlier um and uh so that's why I got into the Vampire Hunter D novels. Um, but, and while I do think the novels are worth the read, um, and the story is interesting, and I keep saying, um, and I, I'll try not to do that anymore. The thing is, is that these are translated from Japanese into English. So I'm not sure about the actual quality of the writing. There are some things about it that are just kind of off when you read these. And I'm not sure if that's due to the original author not being that good. Um, I, I assume that's not it because um, Vampire Hunter D is actually pretty big, especially in, in Japan. It spawned 28 novels. But at the same time, I, I wonder if it's due to the translator maybe not being as as good as he needed to be. I'm not sure. The thing is, is that it does kind of seem to me that um, when I, so like I said, I started getting into these and so I tracked uh, when the next novel would be out and I'd read it and I'd wait for the next novel to be out and then I'd go buy it and I'd read that one. Um, and so it seemed to me a little bit rushed. I know translation is very difficult work and it just seemed that the, the translator maybe was rushing it a bit uh, rather than actually spending his time to make a good translation. There are just some things about the writing that uh, are, are kind of iffy. Other than that, like I said, they were interesting stories. Uh, there were just a, li a couple of things in there that the writing just was a little off. Um, I'm still saying, um, one of the things that, uh, one of the things about Vampire Hunter D that kind of irritates me is, uh, the, the description of D himself. He's described as being so beautiful, so beautiful that it doesn't matter who you are man man or woman you almost fall in love with this man not in a in a like he's my brother or he's a great dude no you it's a sexual i want him love for this this man and uh i don't know the the description just like i said it, i'm not sure if it's the the author itself the uh, author himself or if it's the translator or or what it is but it just, and this, this could just be from my perspective. Uh, I get it. He's a very attractive individual. Um, but it just seems like they dwell too much 
on it. They make too much of a focus of it. And this just could be me reading too much into it. But like I said, great book. I encourage the read. Uh, and I apologize that this is so long in coming. Just the, the holiday season was here and just couldn't get to it. So uh, I will be trying to get to more stuff. I got some some books that I'm looking forward to reading. I actually got another Vampire Hunter D novel for Christmas. So, uh, and some more Simon R. Green. Um, I've talked about uh, Simon R. Green before as well. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm actually reading the Vampire Hunter D novel right now uh, and enjoying it. So I probably won't review that one for a while just because it's like book number 20. So there you go. Let me know what you thought. Uh, give me a like and, and subscribe and you'll get more of these. So in the meantime, have a great time.